Hi friends, welcome to the channel, I'm Santiago and today I wanted to discuss a little bit about how I got this award right here. Now, this supposedly certifies me as being top medical intern in my city and top third best overall in my country. And to be honest, I'm not really sure if this is a measure of success or not, but either way, I thought I might share with you guys the top three overlooked habits that I think got me to this point. Hopefully you can use those habits to your favor or at least get a couple of new ideas and things you may be able to improve to achieve your own goals. But anyways, without further ado, let's get on with the first habit, which is prioritize application over input. You see, medical students tend to prioritize very heavily the input. So we drown ourselves in books, papers, videos, and we have this mentality of the more we read and the more we learn, the better students will be. And that's true to an extent, but in my experience, what really helped me stand out for my peers was not learning, was applying. You see, ever since I was in first year of medical school, I got used to answering question banks, solving clinical cases, reading New England Journal of Medicine vignettes. And at first I used all of those because, well, they were way more fun than just reading a book. But what I didn't knew at the moment was that all those types of resources actually teach you medicine in a way no book or paper can. You see, clinical cases have like a different perspective on medicine. They highlight different things, more important things in my experience. And it wasn't uncommon for me to be like a mental picture of a disease, just to realize later when, with a clinical case that actually that's not how it is. Actually, this is what's really going on. This is what's important. This isn't. Answering questions felt like having this mini attending at my disposition that was showing me the way, showing me what's really important, what I should focus my efforts on. Additionally, answering questions is a skill. And like any skill, the more you do it, the better you get at it. And guess what? Most things that will rank your value involve answering some type of questions. So if you want to get really good at things like the USMLE, the shelf exams, or at least for me, the National Contest of Medical Interns, getting as much training under your belt will help you to do that. And one thing I should mention is that you shouldn't rely solely on clinical cases or Q banks to test and apply your knowledge. You should try to look for every opportunity to apply the things you learn. For instance, one thing I always do, and my friends can 100% confirm this, is that I try to look for attendings that pimp a lot. And by the way, pimping in medicine is not that type of pimping. Pimping is just attacking the students with questions. And most people hate it because, well, you end up looking like a fool 9 out of 10 times and typically during rounds in front of everyone. So understandable. But I love it. And that's not because I know all the answers or because I'm very comfortable looking like a fool. It's because I know that I can learn a ton more when I'm being asked rather than when I'm just passively involved watching how everybody presents their patients. Okay, coming up is habit number two, compound your efforts. Compounding is basically stacking up tiny achievements over time so you can have the leverage and use that leverage to get bigger achievements. I like to explain this one using research publications. So let's say that you're hiring an assistant for a research project and two guys apply for the job, one with zero experience and one with a couple of good papers already published. Who are you gonna hire? Nine out of 10 times, the guy with experience will be hired. And in fact, after publishing the paper from this project, he'll have even higher chances of getting hired for the next job. And when he has 12 papers on his name, you can bet that he'll get every position he applies to. So this very interesting phenomena develops in which the more he gets selected, the more he will continue to be selected. That's why research publications are distributed in a Pareto distribution, in which almost everybody has zero to one papers and a couple of guys have 12, 20 or 60 papers. And this is very eloquently explained by the Matthews principle, which roughly says something like, for those who have something, everything will be given, for those who have nothing, everything will be taken. And it seems a bit unfair, but what you have to understand is that you can play exactly the same game. You just have to learn how to compound your efforts. Now, how to do that? Well, it's not that hard. You just have to pick something you like, something you wanna get really good at, something you're passionate about, and start stacking up tiny achievements. I, for instance, did it with teaching. I love to teach, it's really one of my passions. So I religiously applied every semester to be a teaching assistant. And of course, at first, no one knew who I was and I didn't get selected for the positions that I actually wanted to teach, but it didn't matter. I kept doing them. I kept stacking up tiny achievements. A few years down the line, I became the guy who had taught more than 300 students who all teachers knew about. I was the guy with leverage. 
and that leverage helped me to achieve the positions that I actually wanted when I began. Uh, and so, because I loved them, I did a pretty good job, and I eventually got nominated and won the Best Medical School Tutor Award. And you see, this is where things really start to compound, because by having this award on my side, I had a ton of leverage to apply to other things. So not only teaching positions, but other academic positions as well. So when I applied to be a representative of the university in the international context of medical knowledge, I got the position because I had leverage. And by having both of those things in my CV, when I competed for this award, I had a ton more leverage. So you can see how having one award suddenly leads you to another and to another and the more awards you have the more easily the other awards come to you. But just imagine for a second how different the story would have been if after I got rejected for the teaching position that I wanted I would have said nah the system is rigged, they asked a lot of experience, how do I want to get experience if I don't get selected for the things I like to teach, I'll better try something else. If I hadn't settled for the positions I didn't like, I would have never got selected for the positions I did like. And without doing the positions I did like, I would have never got this award. And without this award, I would have probably not got the chance to represent the university in the contest. And without having both of those things, who knows if I would have got this prize or not. So keep that in mind because I see a lot of students saying that A, I really want to publish a paper but nothing really interests me, that publication sounds really boring, that research product sounds really awful. But you have to understand, to get to those types of publications, to get to win prizes and research and things like that, you first have to stack up tiny results. When you have those first lousy papers that really no one listens, that probably bored you to hell, when you have that under your belt, you have leverage to get the positions and the research publications you actually want. And that happens with everything in medicine and with everything in life. And if you're just starting out this journey, select something you like, keep stacking up tiny achievements, and when the big opportunity comes up, take it. Okay, and finally we have habit number three, which is learn to communicate. Learning how to communicate properly is a necessity because it gives you the power to transmit knowledge and helps you emit confidence and security to everyone around you. It is without a doubt the thing that helped me get this award home. Because you see, among the top 10 interns that were selected based on the exam and the CV, eh, the top three were selected based on their performance on a simulated patient encounter. Actually, 10 simulated patient encounters, like the angry patient, the poly traumatized patient, the CPR code, and so on and so forth. All of those encounters involve some type of communication, either with a patient or with a team, and if you don't know how to communicate properly, you're out. Now, how can you improve your communication skills? Easy. Watch and do. So, first, pay attention. Watch how your attendings talk to a patient, how they talk among themselves, and analyze the response of the person in front of them. Try to see what elements are the ones that elicit a good response and which elements don't. Think to yourself, how would I have explained this if I were on his shoes? And whenever you have an opportunity to talk to your attendings or to talk to your patients, talk. I, for instance, during my first surgical rotation, always volunteered to deliver the paperwork for the patients, which is something everybody kind of hates and tends to delegate it. But at the moment I thought, okay, I have the worst speaking skills ever and I have a lot of uh, fear to deliver bad news or explain medical diagnosis. So I'll try to have these tiny encounters with the patients, taking advantage of the fact that I have to deliver this paperwork to build up my confidence. So when I have to tell a uh, scary diagnosis, explain bad news, I don't know, do something that scares me, I have a lot of experience that supports me and allows me to say, okay, I've done this a hundred times now. It's not gonna be that hard. And the amazing thing is that it worked. Now, when I have to speak to a patient in Spanish, I have all of this confidence that allows me to deliver the information efficiently. Now, in English, I'm still learning my ways, but I know that it's just a matter of practice and time to get to the exact point that I'm now in Spanish. But anyways, that was it for the video. If you found it useful, make sure to leave a like and comment down below. That really helps me to continue uploading content such as this one completely free of charge for you guys. And if you want to learn more of my tips and tricks, make sure to subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in that next video.